welcome to the video. My name is Amy. I run a small shop on Etsy called Birch Glass and today I'm going to show you how I made this 3D flower and I'm going to show you the step by step on how I put it together. All of the steps are in timestamps below so you can go back and forth where you need to. You're not going to need a mould but you may need some play-doh or some blue tag or maybe even some kitchen roll but we'll get into that later. Right then let's get started making this flower. If you do need any help at all be sure to put a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So you start out with your pattern with three layers of petals. You can draw your own or if you prefer I have this two page pattern up on my Etsy shop if you'd prefer to use that. The link is below in the description. I have my bottom layer at the bottom of the page and then the middle section of petals and then the top section. There's also a reference image at the top to help with the placement of the petals. Opaque glass looks great with this pattern and that also means you can't see your solder supports through the glass. I choose to cut and glue my pattern onto the sheet. If you're using my pattern and following along it might help to keep your sections separate throughout the process if you can. Here I am just gluing my pattern onto this very nice purple. I used a deep amber brown for the centre of my flower. I then started to cut my glass, starting with the centre piece. I was using my running pliers and my thin jawed grosing pliers for this. This wasn't particularly a good day for me with cutting curves so there was a lot of nibbling with my grosing pliers on this piece. Cutting the glass and soldering are my two favourite parts of the process, when they are going well, that is. It's so satisfying to snap the glass and soldering can often be really therapeutic to me. I'd love to know what your favourite part or parts of the process is and why. So do let me know down in the comments below. When breaking off the smaller sections, I use my grosing pliers with the flat jaws at the top. I pull down and away from the glass. You'll then want to grind your edges. After grinding, I wash my pieces in warm water and dish soap to remove any oils, glue and the pattern pieces. I did this with the bottom, middle and top section separately as to not mix them up. And now you're ready for copper foiling. You can map out where each petal goes to make the soldering stage a bit easier, but you can also just do this after the soldering and thickening the petals. I'm going to show you how I choose to copper foil my pieces and it works really well for me but everyone has their own methods so do whatever you're most comfortable with. I start with a small bottom edge of each petal so that the end of your copper foil isn't on an outside section of the design. This means it's less likely to come away if there's excessive heat when soldering. I then wrap the foil around the edges looking into the centre of the edge of the glass and running the foil down the whole side at once or sometimes in two parts. I used to do small sections as I went along but I'd often end up having wobbly foil that was never really fully centred. As I finish wrapping, I push the foil down securely onto the glass and then pull it slightly as I break the tape with my nail. I used to use scissors but it has become far easier and faster for me to do it this way. Then I burnish the foil onto the glass. If ever there's some overlap of the copper foil, I'll trim that off with a craft knife. If you leave the overlap, you can often see this still after soldering and it doesn't look very good. Now it's time to tin the edges of the petals and then build up a nice round bead of solder around them. This isn't necessary if you're new to building up edges, but it does make a huge difference to the end result. The rounded edges makes it look more complete and tidy. I'll show you how I do it, but I'm still quite new to it myself, so bear with me if it's not perfect. First off, I make sure my iron is set to 360 degrees. I flux the piece, then blob some larger beads of solder onto the edge in a line, being sure to hold it level both ways. You need to be careful you aren't tipping it to the side horizontally or holding it in a way that the solder would fall towards or away from you. I then go along the edges, tapping to smooth the solder and slowly turning as I go. Leave the thinner edge of the petals though, you don't need to build this up. 
Here's where things get interesting, it's time to put it all together. I used Play-Doh to lift the centerpiece slightly and also hold the petals in place for the 3D effect. You can also use something like blue tack or even damp kitchen roll if that's all you have at the time. I lift the centre slightly to create more space for the second layer to attach to the middle section. You want to lift it enough so that the bottom petals are almost going underneath the centre but still touching the edges. Flux and tack the petals into place and once they're tacked you can go back around and smooth out the solder. Flip the piece around and build up the solder on the back to strengthen the bottom layer. Flip back to the front and we can start placing the second layer of petals. Using my Play-Doh I created a sausage shape and wrapped it around creating a platform for the petals to lay onto. Keep this far enough away from the centre so that you don't get Play-Doh where your solder should go. Look at the pattern underneath your piece and lay out the second middle layer of petals where they are on the pattern. This doesn't have to be exact but try to keep it as close as you can for ease with the top layer. Squish them down into place and try to ensure that they are at the same angle all the way around. You can check this by coming down so your eyes are at the height of your piece and tweaking the placement if you need to. Also be sure the bottom of the petals are touching the tin foil on the centerpiece, flux and solder into place. You'll then want to remove your Play-Doh or whatever it is you're using and solder the sides for extra support. Then flip the piece over and solder the seams under the middle section of petals. Now it's time to attach the top layer of petals. Slide your pattern out so it's next to your piece. This helps with the placement of where each petal should go. Ensure your pattern is the same way round as your glass piece so far. For this layer, I used big blobs of Play-Doh underneath the tops of my petals to put them into place. This can be a bit fiddly, but you can always tweak them afterwards. Ensure they are all at the same angle again, flux and solder them into place. Then build up a wall of solder in the middle for extra support and for a base for the decorative blobs of solder which come next. It looks pretty ugly in the middle now so the blobs really make all the difference. And here's how I do them. Still set to 360, I start the blobs usually as close to the centre glass as I can and work outwards, grabbing decent amounts of solder and gently carrying it onto the wall of solder. And anywhere else that looks a bit messy. The trick is to attach the blobs with the edge of your iron on the corner, so not on the flat of your iron. This way the blobs come off easier. What also helps is holding the solder onto your piece for a couple of seconds before letting go, then you can be sure it's fully welded on and won't come off when you're washing it. Using gravity to create the peaks of solder where you want them. If it's tilted too far to one side, your blobs may just fall wherever you don't want them. Don't stress if you struggle with this part, more often than not you can cover any mistakes with more blobs. This part is a lot of fun when you get into it. If you choose to put a jump ring on your piece, ensure your jump ring is attached to a few different parts of the piece as it's quite heavy and you don't want the foil to ever lift off under the weight. And you're done. I use dish soap, warm water and a sponge to clean the piece and I polish it with tea cut to make the solder shine. If you end up creating this piece either from my pattern on Etsy or you make your own pattern following the video, I would love to see. Be sure to share a photo with me on any of my social media. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was a useful tutorial and I hope that I made sense. Again, if you do need help, just pop a comment in the comment section below. And do check out my glass patterns that I have on Etsy as well, I have a few on there. 
Let me know if you do want more videos like this if you found it really helpful and I'm also going to be opening some glass pattern commissions soon so keep an eye on the Etsy for that. I do also live stream on Twitch and I have a Patreon and both of those links are just below so do check them out if you have a moment. And speaking of Patreon, I really want to thank my current patrons, your support means the world, your name is going to pop up at the end of the video. Best of luck and thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time. If you do make this piece, be sure to tag me in my social media, the handle is Birch Glass. Bye! My dog was definitely crying in a few of these shots, definitely. If you can hear a little crying sound because he's hungry as always, and that's probably why. Anyway, thanks for watching, see you later.